Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and in this challenge, we are looking into how we can aggregate text values from multiple rows into one cell. As is often the case, you can solve it either with text or Power Query. Now, for this one, we're gonna do it in Power Query. If you're new to our channel and you're looking for improving your Power BI skills, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. Let's start by having a closer look at the data for this challenge, which is our tracking sheet for different projects by employee and week. Okay, so here on the left hand side, we have the weeks, then we have the projects, and at the top, we see all the different employees. Now, every week, this sheet is filled out, which is nice for the person that fills it out, but we have to transform it if we want to analyze it further inside of Power BI. Now on the basis of this data set, we are gonna build the following visual, which shows by project, the hours worked, and we have a split by the employees that belong to the top three, that's the dark blue bar, and the other employees, that's the light blue bar. And when we hover over one of those bars, then you see for that project, the top three at the bottom. So for the project A, Lars, Mark, Peter, Project B, Wesley, Stephanie, Jen, etc. Okay, so let's jump into Power BI and connect to the data set. So here you see the same data set inside of the query editor in Power BI. Now, first of all, I want to get rid of the totals. We don't need those. So I'm gonna go to column two, where we have just one null for the total row. So I can just simply put a filter, which removes all of the empties. All right, so that row is gone. And now here we have some missing values for the week. So I'm gonna fill that down here under transform, fill, fill down. Okay, so that's cleaned up as well. And we have separate columns for each employee. So we need to unpivot that. Okay, so here we have the choice. We can select all of the employees and then select unpivot, or we can select here the week column, project column, then go to transform and choose unpivot other columns, which probably is a little bit better in this case, because if we add new employees in the future, then those new columns will also be unpivoted. Okay, so let's go for that option, which gives me now four columns, one for the week, one for the project, one for the employee, and one for the hours. So let's now rename those columns. So the first one is gonna be the week column, then we have the project column, the employee column, and we have here the hours worked. Now what we wanna do for this challenge is to combine the names that we have in the employee column. Now we can make use of the grouping feature. So if you go to the transform tab and then group by, and then here we can switch to advanced, and then we're gonna group by, let's start by grouping by the project, and then we are going to uh, sum the employee column. Now this, of course, will give me an error. However, we can then adapt the formula a little bit so that it combines the text values instead of trying to sum them up. Okay, now let's just call this one employees. Now as predicted, we end up with errors, but we can take the generated formula and adapt it so that it does what we are looking for. Okay, so if you don't see the formula bar, just go to the view tab, make sure that the formula bar is visible. And then we can go here to the formula and you see where it tries to sum the employees, right? So there's the list.sum function and we're gonna replace that with the text.combine function. And now you see that it combines by project all of the different names. All right, now if we want to have a comma with a space in between, we just go back to the text.combine function, add a second argument, and then in between quotation marks, we can type in the separator. And then let's see, now we have a comma and a space. Now the problem with this approach is that we do have the combined names. However, we don't know which employees belong to the top three for each project, okay? so. That's where we get started. So we have to go back a few steps and choose a different way of solving it. Okay, so let's now delete this last step, group the rows, and try a different approach. For our challenge, we want to find the top three employees on the basis of uh, the hours that they worked by project. Okay, so I'm gonna group it to that level of detail. So I'm gonna go to transform, group by, 
advanced. And then here I'm going to choose project. Then I would like to add a grouping for the employee. And then here we're going to have our hours worked. Okay, so let's sum the hours. So now we need to apply the correct sorting by project and the hours that the employees worked. Okay, so I'm going to go first to the project column, sort that in ascending order. Then I go to the hours column and sort that one in descending order so that we have the most working employees at the top by project. And now that we have the correct sorting applied, we're going to group it once more. So I'm going to go again to transform, group by, and over here I'm switching to advanced. I'm going to group it by project. And now we're going to have a new column. Let's call this one data, and which simply takes all of the rows. Now let's see what it returns. I'm going to click on OK. You see we have only three lines. And we have here a data column with nested tables. Now, if you want to see what's inside of these nested tables, you just click on the blank space right next to it. And this returns you the corresponding rows for that project. So you see we have our project and we and hours column, but only for project A. And then if I click on the blank space for project B, you see same thing, but then for project B. Now, what we can do now is that we add another column that combines all of the employee names. Okay, so I'm going to go here to add column and this is going to be a custom column. And let's call this one employee. And here we're going to use the following formula, table.column. And we want to refer here to the data column. So I'm going to insert that one. And we want to have the employee column from that nested table. Okay, so let's close the brackets and then click on OK. Now we have a list with all of the employees that worked on that project. And we can use this as an input for the next column, which is going to take the first three names only. Now the first three names only corresponds to the employees that worked the most because we already applied before the correct sorting order on the basis of number of hours that the employees worked. Okay, so I'm going to go back to adding a custom column. And this one we can call top three. Now here we can use a list function, which takes the first couple of employees. So this function is called list.firstn. Now the first argument is going to be a list, which we have in the employee column, which has nested lists. So I can insert the employee column. And then we can also say how many we want to return. We only want to have the first three. Now let's click on OK. And let's see what is inside of each list. So here we have now only Lars, Mark, Peter. And then for project B, we have Saskia, Gabi, Lars. So only those three employees that worked the most. Okay, so now we can get rid of the columns that we don't need for our final result, which is the project column and the employee column, because these are also inside of the nested tables from the data column. So I'm going to remove those. And then I'm going to expand the data column. So over here, we don't need the prefix. I'm going to expand, click OK. This gives us all of the data. And here we have one column which contains the top three lists for each project. And you can click on the expand button. And then here there's also an option to extract the values. And that's what we want in this case. And we want to have a custom delimiter. Let's use a comma and space and then select OK. And there you go. We have by project the top three employees. Now we need one more column for the visualization that we want to build in the end. And that is if the employee is in the top three or not. Okay, so this we can do with a conditional column. So let's go to add column, conditional column. And here we can call this one is in top three, question mark. Now the column name that we want to check is the top three one. And if it contains the employee name, then we want to return a value. Yes. And otherwise, no. As so for last mark, Peter, 
it's yes. And for the other ones, no. And then over here for project B, Wesley, Stephanie, Jim, yes. And for the other ones, no. So that, that is working. Okay, so now we have the two columns that we need for the final visual. Top three and is in top three, question mark. Okay, so let's load it. Let's now build the final visual where we need on the axis, the project name. And then we want to know the hours worked. Okay, so I'm gonna put hours on values. And then we want to have a breakdown by whether the employees are in the top three or not. So let's take the is in top three column and put it on the legend. Now let's then also add some labels to it. So I'm gonna go here to format and then turn data labels on. And then we also need to add the top three employees to the tooltip. And for this, I'm gonna go back to the field section, take the top three and put it on tooltips. Let's now hover over one of the projects. And you see for the project A, we have Lars, Mark, and Peter. Then for project C, we have Saskia, Gabi, and Lars. Project B, Wesley, Stephanie, and Jim. Now maybe the order is a little bit strange, so let's change the order on the x-axis. So I'm gonna sort over here in ascending order. And I want to sort by the project. And you see, this is the final result that we were looking for for this challenge. I hope you learned some new things when it comes to writing functions using Power Query and that you find a use case for the projects that you're working on. As always, there are different ways of approaching this. Now, maybe you know a better or smarter way of doing this using Power Query, so no ducks. Then share it with us in the comment section below and I hope to see you in the next challenge.